Happy Wednesday, Red Hill, and welcome back to our Advent devotions. This week, we are speaking on peace, and Eros and John have both done an amazing job so far speaking about the Prince of Peace, peace for all believers, and why Jesus came. The dictionary actually defines peace as a non-warring condition or an agreement between nations, groups, and peoples who are at war previously with one another. Keeping this in mind, let's read Romans 5, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So why is this relevant to us? Well, this verse is actually telling us that we've been justified through faith in Jesus, and we now have peace with God through Jesus Christ. This peace is not referring to peaceful feelings of tranquility or calmness. It's actually saying that we have peace with God, meaning we are no longer enemies or warring with God. The Bible says in Colossians 1, 19 to 21, that for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Romans 5.10 also says, For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? It may be difficult to process this reality that we were once God's enemies, But if we do that, we may be able to develop a greater understanding of the significance of what it means to now be at peace with God. We are no longer enemies, but have been reconciled with the Father through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. This means that there is no more hostility between us and no sin blocking our relationship with him. Jesus has paid the ultimate price, dying on the cross for us, so that we could be reconciled and at peace with the creator of the universe. So what does this mean for us, Red Hill? Well, how many of us would die for our enemies, people who have hurt and wronged us? Maybe not many of us. But while we were enemies of God and absolutely undeserving, Jesus died for us and we were reconciled to God the Father. Meaning, if God did the most loving thing for us while we were hurting him, how much more will we experience his love now that we are in relationship with him? It means we stand in a place of highest privilege in his grace. And by standing in this place of grace, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. This rejoicing is not temporary or based on how well our lives are currently going. This rejoicing is actually ongoing because it's not focused on the present, but focused on the hope we have in Jesus, the hope we spoke about last week. It means like Romans 5, 3 speaks about, we learn to rejoice in our suffering because suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And this hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Rejoicing in our sufferings is quite difficult at times because, as John pointed out, suffering and death is often what could draw us away from God and begin to question him. So what does this hope and rejoicing in our suffering have to do with peace? Well, if we understand what our hope is in and that these earthly sufferings are temporary, then it means our peace cannot be robbed from us and that we can actually experience true peace every day of our lives. You see, peace is not something you can attain from the outside. It's not something you can buy or produce by yourself. Peace is a person and his name is Jesus. The Bible tells us to let the peace of God rule our hearts since as members of one body, we are called to peace and that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So despite the troubles and sufferings we will encounter during our lives as we eagerly wait for Jesus, even the troubles we've seen in the past year, we take heart knowing that Jesus has already overcome the world. We are not immune to troubles. In fact, the Bible tells us that we will have troubles in this world. However, Jesus reminds us and affirms us when he says in John 14, 27, 
Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is absolutely amazing because it means nothing or no one can rob us of our peace. No situation, circumstance, person, place, or thing can take away what has been purchased for us and freely given to us by the death and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So Red Hill, as we go about our day today, I encourage us to meditate on this peace that is within us, to ask God to expose things in our lives that we have allowed to penetrate our peace and ask God for help to bring those things to him and lay them at his feet so that the peace of Christ can ultimately rule in our hearts. So as 2 Thessalonians 3.16 says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way, and the Lord be with you all. Have an amazing day and a great rest of your week. Take care.